So Monte Carlo is obviously the golden standard for treatment planning systems. And so it's important for you to understand what Monte Carlo is, how it works, and then the characteristics of it. So I created one large question. So you would never get a question like this in the exam that has this many parts to it, but it's important to know all aspects of Monte Carlo. So we're gonna cover this in one video, kind of do a, a fair swoop of all the information. And of course, go in further detail uh, if you would like. And there's a lot, lot to know about Monte Carlo, but you also can't dive too deep into the rabbit hole because there is a lot to know for this exam. So what is Monte Carlo? What is a history? Why is there noise in Monte Carlo? Describe the four steps used. What are some ways to reduce the time spent calculating? And this is sometimes called the variance reduction technique. So they may ask, what are some variance reduction techniques? How would you verify Monte Carlo? What do you need for Monte Carlo? What inputs are necessary? What is a phase space file? What is eCut? What statistical uncertainty is okay? And then how do you ensure the accurate density and material map of the patient? So what is Monte Carlo? So it is a simulation and it simulates a large amount of particles interacting in a medium to determine dose. So as I mentioned, it is the gold standard. It is the most accurate system and estimation that we have for radiation ionizing dose was a history. So a history is a single particle and all of its descendants. So essentially that includes a electron exiting the magnet and everything that it produces. And I'm just gonna put all products. That is what a history is. Now, why is there noise? And that is because we are simulating individual particle histories. We just talked about history. Because we are simulating this single electron, ISO lines are going to be a lot more jagged than the model-based ones. The noise here is proportional to 1 over N, where N, capital N here, is the number of histories. So the more particles that you are going to simulate, the more noise you are going to get, which is why often you don't see a super smooth algorithm. However, it's the most accurate. So some of the smoothing we see in some of the algorithms are, are more of a, a nicety than actual realistic expectations of what the dose may look like. So what are the four steps used in Monte Carlo? So let's move this up and let's talk about the four steps. So the first thing you have to do, number one, and, and this is, I think, very important to understand. So you want to convert the CTHU to the correct structures. So first thing you have to do is verify that all the structures have correct CT numbers and that those are accurate because that is going to determine how this dose, how these particles interact with that structure. Two, you're going to find the distance to next interaction site. Interaction site. Then three, we're going to use ray tracing. And that is going to get the particle that we are simulating to that interaction site. Uh, particle to interact site. The four, we want to select the interaction type at that site. Now, this is probabilistic, of course, but ultimately you do have to determine what the interaction type is. And then finally, you want to actually simulate that interaction. Those are the steps in Monte Carlo. I also realized I just wrote five steps. So what are the five steps in Monte Carlo? You could probably lump a couple of these, select interaction type and simulate. That could be one step. But those ultimately are the steps in Monte Carlo. 
So now what are some of the, the variance reduction techniques? So without going into too much detail, first we have condensed histories. So this is exactly as it sounds, where most particles don't change energy or direction. So you're condensing the histories, making them more simplistic. That's going to reduce calculation time and ultimately also save on, on power and just time spent doing the calculations. There's also something called Russian roulette. And that is where we ignore particles that aren't likely to make an impact. So it's Russian roulette because it's a gamble. More likely, they're probably not going to make an impact, but it's still, it's still a risk. Then we have range rejection. And this is where we ignore particles whose range can't get to the next voxel. So we just assume they deposit their energy in that voxel. They can't make it to the next one. Again, that reduces simulation time and ultimately time spent calculating. And then finally, there's also something called splitting. And that's where a increased number of particles in the areas with low fluence, and it also reduces final error if you do that. So you want to increase, increase the number of particles in the areas with lower fluence. So now, how would you verify Monte Carlo. So this is important if you are commissioning this in a clinic or you have it in your clinic and there's an update, uh, upgrade, anything where you want to verify Monte Carlo is accurate. So first thing the, that you want to do is do, of course, percent depth doses. You want to do beam profiles. You want to do the MLC dose profiles. So a lot of the work with the MLCs, how they move, what they're made of, what are the dose profiles with. You want to use small field sizes. You also want to go ahead and take some point doses. Ideally, if you have a rando phantom, that is ideal. It simulates a human body. There are a lot of advantages to the rando phantom for an end-to-end -end test. Definitely do it. And then you also want to use a grid size of two to three millimeters. So now what do you need for Monte Carlo? If you were going to commission Monte Carlo, what exactly do you need to actually commission this? So first you need cross-section data. So cross-section, essentially you're going to find the probabilities that certain interaction types are going to happen because we are simulating each and every interaction and we've talked about some of these variance text techniques and just in general, right here, select the interaction type in the actual steps of Monte Carlo. It has to know what the probabilities are. You also need some type of algorithm for the particle transport. So again, we are simulating where these particles are going and how they're interacting. So how are you going to get them to that interaction point? And then you also just simply need the geometry of your linear accelerator. Where are the jaws? How big are the jaws? What are they made of? What's the distance from your target to your effective SSD? All of the geometry you are also needing. So the inputs, let's talk about what inputs are necessary. And this kind of, I guess these two could have been one question, but the inputs, we talked about the accurate geometry. We talked about the linear accelerator specs. Again, the target materials, the distances, all that stuff you need. The stopping powers, the interactions, the scattering powers, all of that goes under cross-section data. And then finally, you also need a accurate density and material map of the patient. Again, having that electron density is critical. And so having these two essentially are the same question, actually. So you put all of these together and you are going to be able to commission that Monte Carlo and verify the algorithm is running to the best of its ability. So... Now, what is a phase space file? So this includes the particle type. 
Now, of course, we have photons, we've got electrons. It also has the energy, the X, Y, Z position, position, and then also kind of directional parameters. And that ultimately is going to help you determine what direction does the particle go. Now, what is ECUT? So a particle transport stops when the energy is less than the E cut. So this happens when particles deposit the energy in that voxel. So ultimately, the E cut is approximately the same as the voxel dimension. So for example, if a voxel is two millimeters, the E cut is roughly less than 500 keV in water or less than 200 keV in lung. And so ultimately that E cut range is approximately the voxel dimension. And there's a lot of research that can be done on this. You could really dive deep into these space, space files and E cut. Again, kind of know the overview be able to answer what it is, but don't go too far into the weeds because you're going to waste a lot of brain power, bandwidth, and time that may not be necessary. So what is or what statistical uncertainty is okay? So we have a task group, TG105. So read that, memorize that. It says 2%. So nice and easy. And then finally, what do you... Uh, or how do you ensure the accurate density and material map of the patient? So as I mentioned here, what inputs are necessary for Monte Carlo? One of those things was a density map for the patient. So what do we need to get this? So first thing, we get this from CT, as you could probably imagine. So the first thing, here's the first step. You want to convert HU to density. And that we do in our clinic normally. And then finally, you want to uh, convert density to material. So that is an overview of Monte Carlo. There's a lot of information here. And there's a lot of good information. But Monte Carlo is something you absolutely have to know. Very well, you could be asked. And in general, it's good to know as a physicist in case you ever need it. You know what goes into it. And that way, it makes you more familiar if you're getting results that don't exactly look good or just allow you to have faith in your algorithm. If you have any questions, comment below. I'm happy to help. Thank you for watching and happy studying.